हेलो गाइस एंड वेलकम बैक अगेन टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज़ विपिन शर्मा बायोलॉजी ट्यूटोरियल एंड टुडे वी आर रीडिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज ह्यूमन आई सो वी हैव टू कंसंट्रेट ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक बिकॉज दैट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो लेट स्टडी ह्यूमन आई सेंस वी नो दैट वी ऑल हैव टू आईज सो द आईज आर पेयर्ड वट इज देयर लोकेशन दे आर लोकेटेड इन सॉकेट दैट आर नोन एज आई सॉकेट विच आर ऑल्सो नोन एज ऑर्बिट इन द स्कल सिंस वी इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्कल this kind of sockets are present where the eye is located so these are known as eye sockets or orbits and the human eye is nearly spherical as we know so if we will talk about the wall of eyeball the eyeball has a wall which is protective in nature and that particular wall is made up of three layers so what are those three layers the outermost layer is sclera whose anterior part is known as cornea which is a little bit thicker and the middle part is known as choroid which has a thicker anterior part in the one third part of eye on anterior region which is known as ciliary body which itself continues to form iris and the innermost part is retina so there is a trick to memorize all these three wall layers of eyeball so what is that particular trick SC reserved. We know that there are some seats reserved for SC candidates in all India pre medical test. So if we will memorize this trick, that is SC reserved. S simply means sclera, which is the outermost. Then the middle layer C, that is choroid, and reserved R E, that simply means retina, which is the innermost layer. So we are talking about the ball layers of eye from the outermost layer to the innermost layer, that is SC reserved. If you will talk about the innermost layer, that is retina. the retina itself is divided into three layers so if we will talk about these three layers inner to outer side because in ncert these are given in inner to outer side so the innermost layer will be the ganglionic cell layer the middle one is the bipolar cell layer and the outermost will be photoreceptor cell so you have heard about a movie that is gangs of wasipur and badlapur these are two different movies but you have to compile them to learn a trick that is gangs of badlapur where gangs simply means g a n g that is ganglionic cell layer badla that is b that is bipolar cell layer and pur that is photoreceptor cell layer which is containing p and r so this trick is uh, is in accordance with the layers of retina so from inner to outer side ganglionic cell layer bipolar cell layer and photoreceptor cell layer we can memorize it by gangs of badlapur and the ball of eye eyeball the layer of that particular eyeball is memorized by this particular trick that is sc reserved which simply means sclera choroid and retina okay so now let's look at the diagram of eye so what is important in this particular diagram the chamber between the lens and the cornea we have talked about it that cornea is the anterior part of sclera which is the outermost wall layer of eyeball so if we will talk about the different wall layers so this is the outermost wall layer which is known as sclera sclera is thin in this particular side which is formed up of dense connective tissue since it is the outermost layer so its major function would be protection and if its function is protection then it must be formed up of dense connective tissue so the sclera is thin in the posterior region of eye in the anterior region it is a little bit thick and forming cornea that we have already discussed the middle layer as we have talked is known as choroid which contain different kind of blood vessels and is bluish in color and if this is bluish in color i have shown it with a blue pen since it is bluish in color and it is thin at posterior to third portion of eye this is the posterior portion and this is the anterior portion so in posterior portion that is the two third portion or we can say approximately 70% of eye the choroid is very thin but at the anterior region it is forming a thick mass which is known as ciliary body and that ciliary body is continuing or this ciliary body continues to form another structure that is known as iris so these 
all are shown by blue color that means all are part of choroid so this is very important that choroid contains blood vessel and is bluish in color which is thin at the two third position or the two third part of eye but at the anterior end it is forming a mass that is known as ciliary body which continues to form iris there are some ligaments which are attached to the ciliary body these ligaments these ligaments holds the crystalline lens which is a major part of eye this crystalline lens is hold by some ligaments which are attached to the ciliary body which is a part of choroid layer okay so since between this lens and the cornea there is an aqueous chamber which is filled with watery fluid that is known as aqueous humor aqueous chamber is filled with aqueous humor which is watery fluid like structure and in this particular region there is a chamber called as vitreous chamber which is filled with vitreous fluid which is a viscous gel like fluid viscous gel like fluid okay so we have talked about all this now the innermost layer the innermost layer is known as retina which is shown with the red pen okay so this layer in the innermost direction is retina which is itself divided into three different layers about which we have talked earlier that is ganglionic cell layer bipolar cell layer and the photoreceptor cell layer okay so there is a spot at the posterior end which is known as blind spot why it is known as blind spot because there are no photoreceptors photo simply means light and receptor means some kind of receptor mole uh, molecules or proteins which are re recepting or you know catching some signals from the light so there, since there are no photoreceptor so they cannot sense the presence or absence of light so this is known as blind spot because it is unable to sense the presence or absence of light and if you will talk about the retina in the upper anterior region of this particular layer there is a region called fovea which is a depressed region okay so that particular fovea is present in a region of a yellowish pigmented spot here is present a yellowish pigmented spot which is very important from examination point of view that yellowish spot is known as macula lutea this macula lutea will contain a central pit okay so this particular portion will have only cone cells if we will talk uh, we will talk about it further that there are two type of cells that is rod cell and cone cell which are responsible to catch light in day and night at different times so at this particular portion only cone cells are present and rods rod cells are absent so only cone cell are present in the fovea region therefore the greatest resolution or the greatest clarity of a particular image will be formed at the fovea region so this question is also very important from examination point of view that there is a yellowish pigmented spot which is known as macula lutea which will have a central pit this region is called fovea where only cone cells are present and the cone cells are compactly present in this particular region therefore it has a greater resolution greatest resolution and the greatest clarity of a particular kind of image is formed at fovea region there are some blood vessels and some nerves going to the backward direction taking that particular nerve to different parts of brain so these are nerves where they, these are leaving the eye and this is the particular posterior portion which is in a little bit upward direction okay so we have talked about choroid sclera retina optic nerves since optic nerve as the name indicates optic it is somewhat related to eye so that particular nerve will help in the sensation of different kind of light so this particular nerve is taking signal from eye to the brain okay so we have talked about blind spot fovea vitreous humor aqueous humor cornea lens okay so this is the aqueous chamber which is very important that it contains a watery fluid and the vitreous chamber contain a viscous gel like fluid you can note it down that viscous and vitreous so it will have a viscous gel like fluid and this have a watery fluid because aqueous simply means water so the name indicates their function here we have talked about iris so what is iris iris is a pigmented opaque opaque means which is not transparent so it is pigmented and opaque 
structure of eye which is the visible colored portion of eye if you will look the eye of a particular person then you will see some kind of visible visible color portion of that person if you look into his eye so that particular colored portion will be the iris okay and we have talked about ciliary body that there are some ligaments which are attached to that particular ciliar body which hold the crystalline lens okay so in front of lens the aperture that is surrounded by iris is called pupil so in front of lens the aperture that is surrounded by iris so we are talking about this particular structure which is known as pupil and the diameter is regulated by the muscle fiber of iris the muscle fibers there are some kind of muscle fibers which are present in iris and those muscle fibers are responsible for the change of diameter or the regulation of diameter of pupil so this is very important this forms a very important question that the diameter of pupil is regulated by the muscle fibers of iris this is very important so we have talked about the three layers of retina that ganglionic cell layer bipolar cell layer and photoreceptor cell layer so the photoreceptor cell layers will have two kind of cells as we have talked about cone cells which are present in fovea region there are only cones so there are two type of cells that is rods and uh, rod cells and cone cells so what is the difference between rod cell and cone cell when we want to look at a particular thing at night that is twilight which is also known as scotopic vision then the rods will function for the visual properties okay so rod will help us to look at a particular thing at night time or for scotop uh, scotopic vision and the cone cells are responsible for the vision of a particular thing at daylight or photopic vision we know very well about photosynthesis that is the formation of food in the presence of sunlight so photo simply means light whose source is sun so if we we'll talk about the photopic vision it means in the presence of sun that is daylight we can understand it in this particular way or the color vision in day is responsible due to sorry is possible due to the cone cells the cone cells are responsible for the daylight vision that is known as photopic vision or the color vision in daylight so there are some tricks we have to understand the alphabetical order only in cone cells there comes c and in daylight it is d so c d these are in alphabetical order and in rod cell twilight and scotopic vision there are three alphabets that is r s t r means rod s means scotopic and t means twilight r s t are also in the alphabetical order so c d are in alphabetical order and r s t are also in alphabetical order which simply makes it easier to learn the name and function of these particular photoreceptor cells these photoreceptor cells contain light sensitive proteins called photopigments there are some pigments or proteins which are responsible for the reception of light which are proteinaceous in nature so these light sensitive proteins are known as photopigments which are present in photoreceptor cells that are rods and cones cones rods is responsible for the night vision and cones is responsible for the day vision the rod cells contain a purple red protein called rhodopsin as the rhodopsin itself contain rod word in it r o d so it simply means that in rod cell there is a protein that is known as rhodopsin protein which is known as visual purple because it is responsible for the vision therefore visual and purple because it is purple red in color it contains derivative of vitamin a so here the linking of some particular topics is very important since we are advised to eat carrots because they are rich in vitamin a and why we are you know suggested to eat carrots because it is rich in vitamin a and it cure night blindness and night blindness will be due to the lack of rod cells because the night vision is totally dependent on rod cell so since if we are suffering from night blindness and if we will read uh, sorry and if we will eat some carrots then it will definitely form some kind of rod cells in our eye which will cure night blindness so that's why we are suggested to eat carrots so the linking of these topics is very important to learn the phenomena the cone, cone cells are of different types that is red cell green cell blue cell which are important for the vision of different kind of colors in daylight since the cone cells are responsible for the color vision in day so there are different colors that are red green and blue 
एंड दीज काइंड ऑफ सेल्स विच आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द विजन ऑफ रेड सेल ग्रीन सेल एंड ब्लू सेल विल हैव देयर ओन फोटो पिगमेंट्स ओके देयर ओन सेंसिटिव सेल्स एंड दो सेंसिटिव सेल्स विल बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द रिसेप्शन ऑफ डिफरेंट रीजन ऑफ लाइट एंड वेन दीज रीजन दीज लाइट रीजन आर स्टिमुलेटेड इक्वली दे विल फॉर्म अ वाइट लाइट वी नो वेरी वेल अबाउट स्पेक्ट्रा एंड ऑल द डिफरेंट कलर्स कैन बी मेड फ्रॉम दीज थ्री कॉम्बिनेशन और द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दीज थ्री कलर्स कैन फॉर्म एनी अदर कलर सो द मेन रिसेप्टर्स आर फॉर ग्रीन रेड एंड ब्लू कलर सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ह्यूमन आई एंड आई होप दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू अलॉट इन योर एग्जामिनेशन थैंक यू सो मच गाइज फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो इफ यू रियली लाइक दिस वीडियो दैन हेट लाइक बटन एंड इफ यू दैन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल थैंक यू सो मच अगेन फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो गाइज